do anything I want to. The supporting muscles and ligaments around the area are, are very, very strong. The structure is, is taking some time, and, and I'm counting on it being better. I've been through this a number of times. In fact, when I had an MRI done on the knee, they, did, uh, they found adhesions in that area <laughs> where I've injured it many times, but it's still very, very strong. Who else has something you want to accomplish? We will talk about the knees. Come on. Lower back problems? Lower back problems. Did you know up to 80% of Americans, we're told, are going to suffer lower back problems? I was one of them, and it's for the same reason. I'm going to share with you some techniques that are designed to open up the vertebrae, increase circulation to the disc, and strengthen the supporting muscles and ligaments around those joints. Anybody else has something specific you want to accomplish? Okay, yes? <laughs> Lift internal organs. Lift internal organs. I have a lady who wrote me a beautiful testimonial. I usually share it in my demonstration. But she said, David, as I was hitting midlife, I felt like everything was headed south. She says, now that I've been using your program, I feel like everything's headed north again. <laughs> and there, there's some truth behind that. In fact, let me share this with you. This was shortly after I began solar sighting. I want you to look carefully at my neck, my shoulders. I had a, a little double chin at one point and a stomach. But go ahead and pass that around. That's my daughter. She's now 30 years old. So when I started this, it was over 25 years ago. Anybody else have anything specific? Oh. I want to make sure I cover okay, Lower blood pressure. Lower blood pressure, it's one of the byproducts of cellular sizing. As we open up blood vessels and we increase the elasticity of the blood vessels, strengthen the heart, the, the blood pressure often just drops. And hardening of the arteries is the number one degenerative disease that we have to deal with. I'm going to show you a technique, a program, you'll actually witness it, that helps to open up blood vessels and, and arteries. It's really pretty interesting. Okay, when I began, I was an insurance agent with Mass Mutual in Newport Beach, California not in the best of condition. I had a little double chin, a stomach. I was 5'10 and a half. I'm now 5'11 and a quarter. I'm three quarters of an inch taller. I've been measured by three doctors and one attorney. So I, when I lecture, I, I tell people about it. The doctors have said it's called imbibing the disc with synovial fluid. That was part of what they believed occurred in my, my height increase, which was rather interesting. It was a funny story. I won't go into it tonight, though. Um, but I needed to get better shape. I'm 59 years of age. I don't do any weightlifting. I'm not a bodybuilder by any means. I'm, 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 I can do the things I was doing when I was in my 20s. Remember, cells don't get old. We can improve and strengthen the cell at any age, and we're doing that. Well, I started a routine, and one month I dropped a belt notch, and one month my arms were bigger, and my wife was saying, are you lifting weights? I wasn't. Six months later, I had a whole different physique. I was standing erect. My stomach was flat. My energy level had soared. My insurance clientele began to say, asking me, what are you doing? I started teaching them. They started getting results. I was invited to speak before Rotary Clubs, Lions, Qantas, Senior Citizen Centers. I did that for three years, woke up one day and said, why am I selling insurance? And I took it out on the road. And I've been all over the country for, for many, many years, um, helping people with all kinds of, of issues and redefining exercise. I said it has nothing to do with age. It really doesn't. Cells don't get old. I have a lady here who began. She heard me on the radio got the program, started to use it. Uh, a few months later, calls up the Seattle Times newspaper and says, you've got to get this information out to the public. Seattle Times had no idea what she was talking about, but they asked her, how old are you? Ruth Mary says, I'm 94. They said, what do you live? So they went and they featured her, put her on the front cover of Section E of the Seattle Times newspaper, sitting Lotus style on her cellar sizer, which is what we're going to be talking about. And she sends me the co a copy of the article with a letter saying, David, I really think this saved my life. And she goes on to say that since the printing of the article, the Seattle Times has had more requests for copies and duplications of that article than of any other article they'd ever printed. Mark, is the Seattle Times a pretty big newspaper? Yeah. It's a pretty big newspaper. So that, that's, that's an impressive uh, story. Got a lady here who began in her 80s. By the time she was in her 90s, she was skiing again. Here she is featured on her unit, and she celebrated her birthday at 101 um, doing toboggan rides. I had a lady call me up while I was at the office to brag. She said Dave, she'd been on it just three weeks, three and a half weeks. She says, David, I just called to let you know I was on top of my rooftop yesterday repairing my own shingles. And you should have seen the neighbors. Yeah, she was 91 years of age. I don't recommend that. <laughs> We've got that. Uh, incredible stories and you'll see where my where my passion is when I read so, or share some of these with you 
because this is why we're involved in this industry, is to help improve the quality of people's lives. Purify, optimize, protect, and literally change individuals, families, communities, <coughs> nations. This is a lady who had migraine headaches since 1958. She'd had 60 days straight and then another 46 days straight. She heard me on the radio, called me up. She said, David, can I use your program? I said, can you walk? She says, no, I'm bedridden. I'm on IV medications. She mentions a lot of them, Loracet, Lidocaine, Vicodin, Motrin, Imitrex, Morphine. She's got a tremor disease. She can't even hold a glass of water steady. Didn't really want to live. Was calling basically out of desperation. I said, you're welcome to try it for 30 days. If it works, great. If not, return it. She gets on it. She, um, I didn't hear back from her for 30 days. I forgot about her. <laughs> Two months go by. Three months go by. I get a two-page handwritten letter from her. Her handwriting's better than mine. In the letter, she says, for the first time since 1958, She's totally migraine free. She's off all pain medication. And for the first time in four years, she's able to paint again. Listen to the, listen to the letters. At the last paragraph, she says, such having such great results physically, I'm feeling so much better mentally. First, I give thanks to the Lord and thank him for you, your work, Dave, and the development of the Solosizer. How much pleasure and satisfaction you must receive from your work. Thank you so much. The Solosizer has given me a new lease on life. How about, uh, here's one. <laughs> Bone density, very, very important. We're told we have to go out and pound and hit a hard surface to create the osteoblastic activity necessary to cause the bones to utilize the minerals to strengthen the, it, its structure. It's just weight. You don't need jarring. We just need weight. What we're going to be talking about is, is a weight-bearing program, but she says since mid, last mid-August, I've been using your program ranging from 15 to 30 minutes a day and I use a timer to track my minutes for morning, afternoon and evening jump. So she's doing it three, 10 minutes a day, three times a day. I had the test done for osteoporosis last July. My T-score was negative 3.1, which meant I had osteoporosis. I just had the test redone in April. My T-score had improved to negative 1.7 into the range of osteopenia. Doctors say you can't improve your score and even alternative medical professionals usually say the score can only be improved by 0.2 or 0.3 if you're lucky. I just improved mine 1.4 points in less than nine months, a 45% improvement. And she'd been ta uh, tracking her T-score since January of 2000. People, uh, another one with, uh, had severe osteoporosis. After six months, she had another bone scan of her spine and hips and reported, I only have a mild case of osteoporosis. Um, fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue syndrome, a uh, lady here, incredible story multiple sclerosis too we've taken people that have been in wheelchairs got them on a solar sizer. literally they've gotten out of wheelchairs and we need to do more research and more studying on that because it's been it's not one time it happens all the time um, another one on diabetes another one you know again lots of them the guy here semi-professional athlete I talk about him often I met him, his knees were shot, he couldn't compete anymore. Got him on the solo sizer. A few months later, he goes out for the senior games pentathlon, wins first place in all of North America. Considered the best on the continent. In the 60s, he leg presses 880 pounds. He writes me a testimonial, and in the testimony he says, I, it has been miraculous, a positive influence your program has had on my body. I've spent thousands on supplements the past 15 years. I've tried to be strength, body stretching routine available, nothing like your program is helping to get my joint and muscle health back. He says, Helen and I are sold at what you created. Um, all right, we're all familiar with exercise, right? We know it's important that we get exercise. Sometimes it's not fun. Sometimes it's not convenient. Sometimes we just don't want to do it. But what if we could change that? See, the fitness industry has taught us for years to buy into the idea that you have to target all these muscle groups and body parts. You have to tear down to build up. Have you heard that? Mm -hmm. They tell you to do it every other day because the body literally has to heal itself. It is simply a manipulation of the body. We know how to manipulate it. But you'll never see any natural, spe any other species, a cat, dog, monkey, or any, any <coughs> other animal species, tearing down their body to build it up or doing some of the insane programs that you see on television. And yet they're, they're very naturally strong and healthy. How about uh, no pain, no gain? Have you heard that one? Yeah. Doesn't really even make sense. 
How about uh, you've got to do 20 minutes to get a good aerobic exercise? Have you heard that one? Mm -hmm. Do your cells have watches? No, it was a great way to sell tennis shoes. Where's out the shoe? People bought into it. Cells don't care about the amount of time. It's how they're challenged within the amount of time, and we'll come back to that. How about um, you've got to sweat to get a good exercise? Have you heard that? Mm -hmm. Sweating has nothing to do with exercise. It simply is the body's way of cooling itself down if you happen to be stressing your body more than it, than it uh, can handle if it's overheating. It's simply, you can get all the exercise you need without sweating if you want. It's up to you. So we're going we're gonna to shatter some, some thinking processes and what we've been taught to believe exercise is. The fitness industry has had us believe that you have to work all these muscle groups and body parts individually. You know why they do that? Because they can create a lot of different types of exercise equipment. <laughs> You've got them, the wedges, abdominal boards, rowers, ski toners, porta bike, fitness climbers, stair masters, health riders, Nordic track, twin airdynes, life cycle, life force, stomach crunches, thigh masters, ab blasters, solo flex, <laughs> treadmill, cyclone, body gym, total, gym, total, 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 it goes on and on. Let's face it, as long as we buy into that methodology of exercise, I think we can all rest assured every six months or so, the fitness industry is going to find another way of packaging another piece of exercise equipment just a little differently to motivate us to add to our ongoing collection. Because frankly, that's how they make their money. And yet the principle upon which every single piece of exercise equipment is based is exactly the same. They all work by applying weight or stress to a certain part or function over and over until that body part function or muscle group adapts by becoming stronger. And all those muscles are made up of what? What are they made of? Cells. So in reality, anytime you increase weight on a muscle, you cause the cells of that muscle tissue to expand and contract with weight against the cell membrane. The cell doesn't care where the weight comes from, but because there's more weight, the cell fortifies its membrane with more protein. It doesn't care where the weight comes from, it doesn't care how sophisticated the equipment is. So in order to become stronger, well, let's, let's talk about it. Let's, I'd like to suggest that the common denominator of all exercise is opposing the gravitational pull of the earth or creating some sort of a resistance. Let's examine the statement. If I were to lie down and do push-ups, what is the force that I have to push away from to lift my body up? Gravity. Gravity. Okay, if I'm doing leg lifts, what force do I have to oppose to keep my leg up? Pull-ups, sit-ups, same thing. We can apply the concept to the accepted aerobic activities of walking, jogging, and running. When I take my center of balance, which is right there, it used to be a little further forward. <laughs> but when I move that center of balance forward, I feel the force of gravity pulling down on me, causing me to take a step, or I land on my nose. We can apply the concept of weightlifting. Weightlifting is simply taking a mass of something and moving it away from gravity over and over. Now, as far as the body is concerned, do you think it cares how sophisticated the equipment is? No. It doesn't matter whether it's connected with pulleys, fulcrums, wheels, arms, cables, chains, or rubber bands. At the end of the cable, the chain, or the rubber band, you still have the weight or the resistance. And it is simply the weight or resistance on the cells that cause muscles to get bigger and stronger. Swimming is a great exercise, unless it's a chlorinated pool. Chlorine kills you, it just does a little bit at a time. But irrespective, what is it that pulls down on the water molecules, creating the density necessary to allow us to move through the water? This is a participatory meeting. <laughs> Gravity. Gravity. So you see the common denominator then of all exercise is opposing the gravitational pull of the earth or creating some sort of a resistance. If that's the case, then all I need to do to become stronger is to learn how to stand heavier. Right? Like this. <laughs> no, not exactly. But I am going to show you a way that you can stand heavier over 100 times per minute. The key to cellular size was given to us as early as 1911 by Albert Einstein. He observed that the human body cannot tell the difference between the forces of acceleration, deceleration, and gravity. To the body, it's simply weight. Well, we have a working knowledge of gravity, so let's consider a moment the forces of acceleration and deceleration. 
and let's admit these forces exist and they have the same effect on virtually anybody because we're all made up of cells and they pretty much adapt the same way when challenged. Anybody here have a sports car? Yeah, I know Mark does. <laughs> Anybody? <laughs> yeah, you've all been in one, right? Maybe? Sort of. Okay. Hello, <laughs> Mask. <laughs> okay, well, with, with a typical sports car, when you punch, you know, I was in a, a Tesla the other day, it was amazing. When you punch that accelerator, you're going to feel the weight of acceleration pushing your body back into the seat, aren't you? Now, when you come around the corner and you see the deer, you're going to hit the <laughs> brake or, <laughs> or the decelerator. You're going to feel the weight of deceleration pushing your body forward into the seat belt. Now, those forces are very obvious, but for whatever reason, the fitness industry has never really harnessed them before, and the only thing I can figure out is probably due to the fact we generally experience the forces of acceleration and deceleration horizontally, whereas we experience the force of gravity vertically. Most of us are not going to be going around town hitting the brake and the decelerator over and over to create a weight-bearing exercise. But what if we could line the forces of acceleration and deceleration up with gravity and combine three forces working on the body, not just one? We'd have a whole different methodology of exercise. All we would need is a piece of equipment that would allow us to harness those forces. And guess what? <laughs> I call it my portable gym. Notice it is extremely portable. Somebody literally once I was doing a presentation, they asked me, well, can I put it in the glove compartment of my car? I did a double take. I said, I, I don't know how big your car. <laughs> I think you meant the trunk. <laughs> but it can fit under a bed, be behind a door, or even in the overhead luggage bin of most commercial airlines. This one went with me to Denmark and back last week in the overhead luggage bin. This unit has a unique history. I'm not going to go into great de detail, but I do need to share a little bit about it with you. It's important. When I entered the industry, everyone, all the mini trampolines on the market were utilizing little tube springs like this. The little tube springs would stretch only a little bit, and then they, you've all heard of rebounders, mini trampolines, typical, yeah, okay. Most of them end up in garage sales. Um, they'll stretch only a little bit. At the end of the stretch, they don't decelerate. They just stop very abruptly. The abrupt jarring effect is so severe it can break the spring as well as damage the person using it. Now, that, my dad heard about my program in 1995 from me. I'd introduce a different spring design, but I probably didn't clarify it well enough with him because he went to a rotary club and he bought a typical rebounder and tried to do my exercises on it. He was permanently disabled within one month. The jarring effect was too severe. It was the same year that Dr. Morton Walker came out with an article in the Townsend Letter for doctors, warning doctors to avoid him, and said the same thing. The abrupt jarring effect was the same as landing on the floor. So when I entered the industry in the early 90s, I introduced a tapered spring design, a spring that had a larger diameter in the middle and then a gradual taper on both ends. That allowed the body to decelerate and accelerate without a jarring effect. Well, no sooner had I done that than guess what the rest of the industry did? They started coming out with tapered spring designs. And the problem was in the quality of the steel. They all look the same until you stand on them. When the steel is too weak, you sink. It doesn't have enough lift. You're not going to get the G-forces. You're not going to get the benefit. It's not going to give you the support. In addition to that, when they're too soft, then your foot can turn in on you and pronate every time you land. Landing like that over and over can cause ankle problems, knee problems, and lower back problems. It will not feel very comfortable, and I do not recommend ever doing my exercises on a typical rebounder or mini trampoline. We call ours the Cellarcizer. It's the best unit in the world, and here's why. We use a triple-tier triflex spring now. This is a patented spring. It's not just a tapered spring. It's a spring that has a larger diameter in the middle, then it has a ridge, then it tapers, and then another ridge where it tapers again. That ridge helps to focus the weight toward the center of the spring, which is where it's softest. That's what we want. If you are jumping higher or you weigh more and you need more spring, 
then the spring will graduate to the next ridge and the next tier, giving you the ability to decelerate and accelerate without ever coming to an abrupt stop or jar. The steel in this spring, it's called the Triflex spring, is so strong it destroyed conventional spring molds. So we had to create a tungsten steel mold just to be able to produce it. But that's where we get the benefit. And you'll all have a chance to try it tonight. All right. Let me show you the unit. This, is, uh, this unit here is over 11 years old. I travel with it. Thousands of people have jumped on it. I want people to see it for what it is. Not looking real pretty. It isn't real pretty right now. It's been through a lot. But I want you to see the condition it's been through, or the condition it's in. To open it, real simple. Grab it, pull it out, lie it down on the ground, pop it open. Literally, in less time than it takes me to put on a tennis shoe, I'm ready to begin solar setting. Now, many people mistakenly believe they can find something like this at a Sears, Kmart, or sporting goods store. Unfortunately, nothing could be further from the truth, and it is important you understand why. This matte material, this is not made out of the canvas, nylon, or plastics you can find in typical rebounders and mini trampolines. Canvas, nylons, and plastics look the same, but the material can stretch, rot, and mildew. When the material itself is stretching, then your feet come down with the spring, and the, the mat stretches your feet pronate. Landing like that over time, again, can cause the ankle problems, knee problems, and back problems. If you alter the angle of your body in different positions, the way I'm going to show so we can target certain areas of our body, you want to have your foot completely supported. If the mat itself is stretching, then your foot can again roll on you, and that can be damaging. So what we use here is a space age material. It's made here in the United States. It's a polypropylene where every fiber is put under nearly 200 tons pressure. That's a lot of weight. Very, very dense. You can leave this out in the sun, the rain, the snow. It doesn't matter. It's all weather resistant. They make swimming pool covers out of this now because it's UV resistant. I use it because you can't stretch it out. You land anywhere on the mat, even at an angle, it lifts you straight up. You land on a mat that stretches some, you won't feel very secure, it'll throw you off. So the springs do not connect directly into the frame. We never wear this frame out. I drill 36 holes through the frame, put steel pins through each hole, and connect the springs to the pins. The frame will last virtually forever. The legs don't screw on, so you don't have to constantly tighten them down. They don't get stripped, stuck, or lost. These fit over a steel post that are held into place by heavy-duty channel wire. Even the rubber tips aren't your typical rubber. We've never worn one out in the years that we've been doing this. It's a polymer. lasts for years. Okay, I'm ready to demonstrate cellar size. I just need to change into my cellar size outfit. So if you'll pardon me. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I said, you know, we don't need anything fancy. We're thinking about designer socks, aren't we? <laughs> yeah, we, we might do that, but, but you really don't need a lot. Cellar size is very convenient and easy. You can actually do it in a suit. Okay, as I stand here, I weigh approximately, you bet, 30 minutes? It looks like 30. Two zero. Two zero it says I've got I've been going by that clock. We started at six and Oh, look at me go. Okay. Well, I didn't set the That's all right. <laughs> we, Canadian we, time, sorry. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. As I stand here I weigh approximately <laughs> one hundred and sixty pounds or one G. That's the weight of gravity. But as I start to move just this high a remarkable thing happens. I no longer weigh 160 pounds at the bottom of the balance. I now weigh closer to 200 pounds, or 1.25 Gs. Now we can measure that with a G meter. Do you know what a G meter is, Blair? I have no clue. Well, many people have one in their own home. They get up in the morning, walk into the bathroom, step on it, look down at the needle, and some people even call it by name. Oh, gee. <laughs> That's a G-meter. Okay. Well, if I were to take that G-meter or bathroom scale, put it on the cellar sizer, and then jump up and down on it, what would happen to the needle on the scale? Some break. Yeah. You bet. Fluctuate, registering the greatest amount of weight at the bottom of the balance. Well, we know that 160 pounds comes from the weight of gravity. 
So what is the other 25% of additional weight that I am putting on my body? Where is that coming from? Go ahead. Force. Hmm? Force. The forces of acceleration and deceleration. You see it? As I jump up and come down, I load the springs. That's the weight of deceleration. The loaded springs then push me back up. That's the weight of acceleration. Whenever we add the forces of acceleration and deceleration on the same vertical plane as gravity, we end up creating an entirely new g-force that every cell of our body is constantly being exposed to. So the question then becomes, well, what happens to the cells of your body when you alter the g-forces? And part of that was illustrated very nicely by NASA who discovered that when the astronauts are in outer space for two weeks, they can lose up to 15% of their bone and muscle mass simply because they're weightless. When they're up there for two to three months or longer and they come down, they're not even allowed to stand up. They're helped out with a stretcher because the entire body is atrophied. Well, NASA didn't have time to put weight-bearing exercises on all these different body parts. What if they missed a part and it was important? They had to find something that wasn't conventional. It was their research that created G-forces on the body that led to the development of the cellar See, doctors know bones and muscles heal faster and grow stronger when exposed to some stress. That's the idea behind the walking cast. So when I'm on the cellar sizer and I'm moving up and down, how many cells on my body are moving up and down with me? All of them. Now, if we were to ask any physical therapist, what is a formula for strength? They're going to agree, well, it's stress times repetition. You stress a certain part or function over and over to adapt to becoming stronger. Well, since I'm bouncing up and down, and I have these G-forces on my body, and I weigh more at the bottom of the bounce, what is, what is, what's this body going to have to do to compensate for the constant weight that I'm putting on it? Get stronger. Get stronger. Tell me, does it have a choice? <laughs> no, I have two options. I'm either going to get shorter and shorter. <coughs> I won't. Or my body's going to have to adapt by becoming stronger and stronger. The physiological implications of the G-forces created on the body through the movement up and down how it's stimulating thyroid, adrenals, endocrine system, liver, kidney, spleen, gallbladder, pancreas, the oxygen, blood flow to the brain. <laughs> it would take hours to go through. We don't have time for that. But what I can do is share with you a few of the basic exercises that we can all benefit from right away. The first is what I call cell aerobics. There's nothing magic about the term aerobics. It simply means that all the cells of your body need oxygen in order to convert nutrients into energy. They receive the oxygen from the oxygen delivery system. We call it the cardiovascular pulmonary circulatory system. It's made up of your heart, lungs, arteries, capillaries, and veins. So an aerobic exercise is virtually any activity that stimulates this system to more efficient oxygen delivery. Now, most of us know that walking <coughs> Excuse me. is as good an aerobic exercise as running. It just takes a little longer. So would this qualify then as an aerobic exercise? Yeah. And notice the hips are allowed to drop down into the mat instead of hitting against the hard surface so it helps to loosen up the lower back and lower lumbar. How about this? Is this qualified? Mm -hmm. So even if I were blind, I could get all the exercise I needed without running into anything or anybody. And if you wanted to train for a special athletic event, well, there's nothing to stop you from doing this. <laughs> you do that for a few minutes, you'll have steam coming out of your eyeballs. <laughs> it's a vigorous aerobic activity. But we left a few things out, such as barking, biting dogs, rain puddles, potholes, carbon monoxide poisoning, curbs, mailboxes, or rollerbladers that jump out of nowhere. A study conducted at the University of Utah concluded that trampolining helped to eliminate as much as seven-eighths of the ballistic impact or jar to your skeletal system compared to running on a hard surface. So we've also helped to reduce or eliminate the concerns of ankle problems, knee problems, shin splints, and lower back problems. And 
we've helped to replace some of the elements of aerobic exercise with some of the more comf comfortable elements, such as being at home with the family, with the radio on or the television, the air conditioning or the heater, or simply a lock on the door for safety and privacy. And notice, one size fits all feet. So if you're not using it, your spouse can. If they're not, your children can. If they're not, grandma and grandpa can. Let me ask you an important question. How many people need aerobic activity in their day-to-day -day lives? We all do. How many people need the jar of hitting a hard surface? We don't. Okay, the next is what I call the mighty bounce for building up muscle mass and bone density. We've already determined that cellulocytes is a weight-bearing exercise. So with a typical muscular exercise, we are taught if I do curls, I'll do a certain number of reps for a certain number of sets, and eventually you reach a plateau, right? So you increase the weight, maintain the repetitions, while your arm and muscle gets bigger and stronger. And it works, but there's a more effective, more efficient way. We've already determined that cellar size is a weight-bearing exercise. So if I were cellar sizing and I wanted to increase the weight to the muscle so they get bigger and stronger, how could I increase the weight on this body while cellar sizing? Yes, simple. Just jump higher. See, the higher I jump, the faster I come down. The faster I come down, the more I load the springs. The more I load the springs, the greater the force of deceleration. The greater the force of deceleration, the greater the force of acceleration. You have to increase deceleration with the increased acceleration. All at the bottom of the bounce, you have a whole new G-force. I'm not going to repeat that. But suffice, <laughs> suffice it to say, at that height, I weigh nearly two Gs. That's twice the gravitational pull of the Earth. That means every cell has to start to adapt by becoming that much stronger, because I don't want to get that much shorter. You get the general idea. See, all other strength exercises just work muscles, and generally only one muscle group at a time. And while it is important to have strong and healthy muscles, isn't it also important to have strong and healthy connective tissues, ligaments, tendons, bones, skin? How do you get a skin cell to do a push-up? <laughs> You have to put it under weight. It's held in place by collagen. Those are protein fibers. Cellular size works to increase the weight to every single cell. See, when you're doing typical weightlifting, you're tearing down to build up. They say do it every other day because the body has to repair itself. And it does with more protein. And then you go and you tear it more. And it has to repair itself again. You tear it, it repairs, you tear it, it repairs. It's a manipulation of the body. It works, but it builds a hard muscle. Hard muscles, especially when you take them to extremes, can compromise your flexibility, your timing, your speed, your coordination, and your athletic ability. Do we have any doctors, health practitioners here? <coughs> Anybody? Massage therapists? Really? <laughs> really? All right. Okay, Steve, have you felt this muscle before? No. I want you to come up here. I want you to squeeze my muscle with your fingertips. Just squeeze that. That's one of the weirdest muscles you'll ever feel. I mean, really give it a good squeeze. <laughs> Isn't that weird? That's a weird muscle, guys. You look at a cat or a dog when they're relaxed, that's the kind of muscle they have. I had a doctor take one, one look at that muscle. He had me come out in front of a group of people. He said, I've read about muscles like yours. I've never seen one. And he commenced to, to do this. He's relaxed. And he said, that's the healthiest muscle I've ever, he'd ever felt. But uh, feel it when I flex it. Now it's a normal muscle, right? Okay, now, all right. So, thank you. <laughs> I want you to realize that cellulose, that you still build strength, but you build healthy muscles. You can cellulose every day, several times a day, if you want to. Okay, I've been saving the best for last. It's great to have strong muscles. It's wonderful to have endurance. It's most important that we have our health, isn't it? When we have our health, we can pursue our wealth and we can enjoy it. But when we lose our health, we'll expense our wealth trying to get our health back again. I think that's what makes what I'm about to share with you the most important message I can leave with you. And it was actually partially taught by my daughter. I was on a cellar size one day and she was still in a crib. And as I was bouncing up and down, guess what she started to do? She started to bounce up and down. 
And I began to reflect on that and realize that kids, children, none of us are born with balance, are we? Is there any here, anyone here born with balance? We often think it's age-related. It isn't age-related. It's physiologically related. It's a physio physiological process that gives us the ability to have that balance. Now, when a baby first stands up in a crib, they hold on to the bar, and this is universal anywhere in the world, even in Denmark. They knew exactly what I was talking about. Um, when they hold on to the crib and they start to bounce up and down, tell me, does it end in the crib? They get out of the crib, they graduate. Now what do they jump on? On the couch. Yeah, the couch or the bed. And what do we do? Get off. Yeah, we tell them to get off. I tell people we knew better. Not only would we encourage them to do it, we'd be up there doing it with them. <laughs> but we do. We kick them off and they begin to dance. Have you ever noticed how young people dance? Anywhere in the world. They're bouncing off the walls, let alone the ground. Mm -hmm. But we get to a certain age in our culture, generally. That's not true with all cultures, but it is with ours. Um, generally speaking, we stop bouncing up and down. We begin to live a horizontal existence and we do it day after day, year after year, with gravity always pulling, even our dance becomes horizontal. <laughs> um, with gravity always pulling, what direction? Is it any wonder then by the time we hit our mid-30s, everything that used to sit up here, now sits down here? <laughs> we stop bouncing up and down. We stop putting weight on the internal organs and the connective tissue surrounding them and so they get weak just like a muscle would if we stop putting weight on it. It's one of the reasons boxers do a lot of jump roping is to strengthen the connective tissues that surround the internal organs because when they get hit in the head, they don't want that brain crashing against the skull causing a knockout. So it's important to have strong connective tissues. Well, that's one reason it's so important. Another reason happens to deal with uh, our arteries. We talked a little bit about hardening of the arteries being the number one degenerative disease. When people don't get enough moving up and down, they're not creating a lot of pressure or fluid movement or back flushing valves or opening up capillaries. As capillaries begin to shrink, body parts and functions become compromised. They become less efficient and we think, well, that's just part of the aging process. But remember, I want you to take one thing with you. There's nobody here over seven years old. Can everybody see that vein? Mm -hmm. Okay, when I flex the arm, it doesn't do anything. It just sits there. If I hit it, um, if I walk around, yeah, it just sits there. The moment that I get on a cellar sizer, that's a little bright, and a little more, and I start to move up and down, watch. There, can you see that pumping? I get it. Can you see it? Yep. Good. All right, all throughout the body, as I'm moving up and down, the fluid movement is back flushing valves in the circulatory system and opening up capillaries. It's helping to get rid of trapped blood proteins. It's helping to increase the elasticity, again, of those blood vessels. Is that important? It is so incredibly important. Um, there's another reason that's so important, though, and that has to do with the immune system. We're going to talk briefly about that. The immune system is composed of different organs and also the lymphatic system. The lymphatic system is a circulatory system that works its way throughout your entire body. But it's not a closed circuit. It's more of an open circuit of muscles. I got it right back there. <laughs> it's more of an open circuit of muscles or of vessels that help to move lymphatic fluid. It's kind of like the branches of an oak tree. They work their way to other small branches toward larger branches toward the trunk that's the largest branch if you will and through the roots well the lymphatic system begins at the lymphatic terminals like those branches they start at the toes the fingertips and other extremities of the body these lymph vessels work their way up to other small lymph vessels toward the lymph nodes where the lymphatic fluid is cleaned and then larger lymph vessels now carry the lymphatic fluid back up toward what's called the thoracic duct your largest lymph vessel and into the venous cava area through what's called the subclavian left vein, which is the largest root, and then back into the bloodstream. There's nearly three times as much lymphatic fluid in your body as there is blood. So virtually all the cells of your body are surrounded by this fluid. When the lymphatic system is circulating properly, it has the ability to flush or suck out the toxins, poisons, and metabolic waste that accumulate within the body. 
which can lead to stress or distress, breakdown in communication, poor health, pre-aging, degenerative diseases, even death. Everybody here know what a lymphocyte is? You know who Captain America is? Yeah. Yeah. Well, your lymphocytes are kind of like your Captain Americas. They're representative of the 1% of the cells of your body devoted to your civil defense. They are devoted to keeping you alive and healthy. The lymphocytes utilize the lymphatic system to move throughout the body. They seek out and destroy viruses, germs, bacteria, fungus, dead cells, mutant cells, cancerous cells, and other foreign invaders. Dr. Arthur C. Guyton, Guyton, G-U-Y-T-O-N, in his book, Medical Physiology, which is a standard used by most all medical schools, points out that if the lymphatic system were to stop circulating for just 24 hours, we wouldn't be here. We'd be dead. That's important to have good lymphatic circulation. I was in, uh, in fact, if the lymphatic system, this reason, if the lymphatic system is not circulating as well as it needs to be, given our current environment and the conditions we are constantly being exposed to today in this world, we're going to be more prone to what? Disease and illness. And according to a number of doctors and lymphologists, if the lymphatic system were to be circulating as well as it potentially can, which means there's a lot of potential there, they say it would be almost impossible to get sick. Well, irrespective, I think it's important, I think we can all agree it's important, that we have good lymphatic circulation. When I was in California one year, the term lymphatic pump came up. I thought, that's an interesting thought. Well, if the lymphatic system needs to be circulating effectively to keep me young and strong and healthy, I want to know where the pump is. Can anybody tell me? Anybody know? Movement. Doesn't have one. So how does it pump? The lymphatic system is dependent upon pressure changes occurring within the body to cause these one-way valves to open and shut. The lymphatic system holds a negative pressure, so any movement causes suction. When you understand that, you begin to appreciate the dynamics of the subtilizer. You see, as I move up and down, just like this, not only are those pressure changes causing the blood vessels to expand, it's literally activating an internal vacuum system of suction that flushes out the internal environment of the body, cleaning it out, getting rid of the toxin, poison, metabolic, or waste, and the, the foreign invaders. That's important? That's important. All right, here's my routine. I get up in the morning, get on the solar for two to three minutes, I do a gentle baby bounce. This gentle movement up and down is creating the pressure changes that activated a lymphatic vacuum, if you will. I'll notice any puffiness around the eyes disappear in about two to three minutes. After I've started to, this is the wake up call. Again, we don't have time to go through it all, but how many internal organs are gently being massaged and stimulated throughout the whole body? This is homeostasis, this is weight bearing on the entire body. Bring all the questions, I've got 10 minutes and then maybe we'll have a, a couple questions. Two, two to three minutes of the baby bounce, then I do the aerobics. I count to 100, or actually I go to one minute. So I go one, two, three, and I see how many times I can do it within a minute. So I'm competing against myself. Then you don't start off like that. <laughs> then I do my calisthenics. Now when I began, I wanted to flatten the stomach. With a sit-up, you limit the effect only to a very small group of muscles in the stomach, no matter what, what it is you do. But when you cellar size, you tilt. It's an isometric for toning. As I tilt, these muscles are tight. We have a balance bar you can hold on to with both hands if you want. I usually turn to the side and hold on to the bar. As I tilt backwards, I kick the legs out. I leverage the weight right here. That is a lot more intense than that. And how many other muscles of my body are involved? All of Every them. single cell. Do you see why this doesn't take as long? All right. Anybody have love handles? Anybody love them? <laughs> Holding on to the balance bar from my hips, I just kick out side to side. Every time I come down, I put the weight right there. Lower back and buttocks helps to lift, tighten, and tone the back side. You can hold on to the balance bar from my hips. I simply kick back. Every time I come down, I'm putting the weight right here as well as on the rest of the body. For the hips, inner outer thigh, lateral knee, 
we can stand, we can start off just rocking side to side as we build up the thighs and the knees and the hips again. But as we get stronger, then we can step on one side and bounce back and forth. As you get stronger still, you can go skiing. It's the same burn feeling you would have if you were on the slopes. It's a great way to get your legs into shape. Second most important physical activity I teach, most important this one, get rid of the stress, tension in the body, open up circulation. If you ever have a hard time sleeping at night, have you ever noticed a parent with a fussy baby? They put them over their shoulder, they gently bounce the baby up and down, right? Mm -hmm. What does the baby do? Yeah, relax, he goes to sleep. I've got good news and bad news. The bad news is most of you are too big to be put over somebody's shoulder. <laughs> okay. But the good news is we get on a solar sizer, we relax our shoulders, back, and buttocks and just gently move up and down for about two to three minutes. Go directly to bed. Don't go do something else. <laughs> go directly to bed. You release the stress and tension in the body, open up circulation, the body can relax. So this is most important. Wake up, call, great way to go to sleep at night. Second most important, concerns the smooth muscles. Digestion and elimination processes, critical for good health. A great majority of our illnesses are occurring because of poor digestion and elimination. We're told up to 80% of Americans have poor digestion and elimination processes. We've got some great products within Q Sciences that literally will deal with your digestion and elimination processes and improve the function internally it'll give you the tools. This one will, give, will create an exercise that can help break down a mucous membrane lining and help the body absorb nutrients more efficiently. We stand on the solar sizer, spread the feet apart, lift the heels up and down. We do a gentle twist. As we gently twist, we're literally putting our colon and our intestines through a little washing machine every day. We're also taking the liver, kidney, spleen, gallbladder, pancreas, and the adrenals. We're gently massaging them as we also loosen up the lower back the second most important activity I teach you we can do. Show you one more, then we're gonna do a quick little demo. Um, as I sit here, put my hands by my hips, I gently bounce up and down. Women, men, same thing. Men, if you wanna get rid of your gut, don't do a bunch of sit-ups. <laughs> You're just gonna get frustrated. You'll have strong stomach muscles, but nobody will be able to see them. Those muscles are too small to burn off the weight. Do the jamba run, we're gonna come back to that in just a moment. And, and that will increase the metabolism. We have women who've gotten rid of cellulite, they've written me, they've gotten rid of their cellulite in as little as two to three weeks. I've had um, doctors tell me that it was so intense, what I'm gonna show you in a moment, the jamba run, that it grows new capillaries. So it's, it's, it can only be done on a solar cider. So gently bounce up and down, take away the hands. Why am I still moving? It's all being done right here with the stomach. As those muscles get stronger, you can lean back further, lift up one leg. You leverage the weight in the lower abdomen where everybody wants to work. When that leg is tired, lift up the other one. Eventually, you become strong enough. You can lift up both legs, bounce a little higher. This is all being done right here with the stomach muscles. As you continue to get stronger, then you can go cheek to cheek. And now you're working the obliques, both sides of the stomach wall, or in and out, or up and down. And I don't know of any setup that's going to come close. All right. Do we have somebody who's in pretty good shape? <laughs> Do we have somebody in pretty good shape? We've got just a few minutes left. Miles? I'm not in pretty good shape, but... Come on up, Miles. Good. <laughs> have you been on this today? Not today. Okay. Are you on it very often? Yeah, the last month, yes. Well, it may not work with you then. <laughs> All right. 99.9% .9 of everybody I, I, I test on this, uh, they're walking around with imbalances in the body and it affects not only their physical health um, and, and chemical well-being of the body, it, it, it affects how they feel and how they, how they can uh, function. So come on over and Milo, I want you to spread the feet apart a little bit, bend the knees side me, take your hands, put them in front of you, Elbows into your side. I'm gonna push down on your hands. I want you to resist, put your thumbs like that. So, and you resist as hard as you can, okay? okay? All right, ready? Ready. Resist, now as I push down, okay, you take that little foot, yeah. little step forward. I wasn't sure he was going to for a moment there. Okay, <laughs> all right, he's pretty strong. <laughs> but let's, let's try it again, okay, ready? Okay, he's gonna rest and I'm gonna push hard because he's strong guy. Resist, now as I push down, okay, he's, he comes right forward. I'm just pushing down, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Okay, come up on the subtle sizer. 
Milo, I want you to take your hands, put them up on the trapezius muscles here, grab those muscles with your fingertips, squeeze them. Now bounce up and down. Perfect, keep going. And can you feel those muscles expanding and contracting with weight on them? Yep. Yeah, it's all weight bearing. At that height, Milo's taking about 20% of his body weight, putting it on top of him. He's doing over 100 of these a minute. But instead of pushing the weight away from gravity over and over, he's increasing the weight of gravity over and over. It's not just on these muscles. It's throughout his entire body at a cellular level. Watch. Grab the deltoids. Grab the shoulder muscles. Are they flexing? Mm -hmm. Is it quite a bit? Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's quite a bit. We show different movements and techniques that address knee problems, hip problems, back problems, shoulder problems um, within the DVD that comes with the cellular side. Okay, grab the biceps with your fingertips, squeeze the muscle, bounce up and down. Can you feel the weight on the muscle? Yes. His whole weight bearing. How do you build up a bicep? Put more weight on it. Well, how do you do that cellular sizing? Bounce. <laughs> it's all weight bearing. The muscle's either going to flop to the bottom of the mat or it's going to have to tighten the tone all the way around the arm. Now take your hands, Milo, put them around your waist, dig into the stomach muscles with your fingertips, squeeze those muscles. Can you feel them flex? Yes, sir. Okay. Is he favoring one side of the body over the other? <laughs> Balance will improve dramatically. Yeah. Is he favoring one side of the body over the other? No. no. So if he has imbalances in the body, both whether it's skeletal or muscular, they're going to start to balance on, out on both sides of the body. There's other demonstrations we can do, we have time for that. Um, Milo, I want you to gently step down. Take the same position again. <laughs> Elbows into your side. And I'm going to push down again. I want you to resist as hard as you can and see if there's any difference. Okay, ready? Yep. Resist. <laughs> Not only is he stronger, he's stronger physically. Think of the implications for anybody you know who likes to play golf. Who, it, when they're that balanced, they'll put more into their swing, or baseball, or tennis, or virtually any activity, including dance, martial arts, it doesn't matter. We can literally tell people we can improve their performance because we can improve their balance and strength. There's virtually no other exercise that's going to do that. The jumbo run real quick is feet spread apart, keep your back straight, feet flat. This is tough. Biggest muscles of the body have the greatest demand, so they give us the fastest results. We want to harness them. We just, this is a jumbo, right? I guarantee you within 20 seconds, you're going to be burning. These will eat, muscles will eat up the glucose and sugars in the bloodstream. You do repetitions of it and uh, do it watching t television. The women who got rid of their cellulite in two to three weeks did it watching friends on TV. What if there were an exercise which was Fun, easy, convenient, economical, safe, and portable. An exercise that would strengthen every muscle in your body all at the same time. Reduce body fat, firm your legs, thighs, hips, buttocks. Strengthen your arms, increase agility. Improve balance, rhythm, timing, dexterity, hand-eye coordination. Provide an aerobic activity for your cardiovascular system and rejuvenate your body when you are tired. A program that's being featured now more and more in health magazines, books, and articles as being effective in helping to lower high blood pressure helping to reverse hardening of the arteries, helping to lower elevated cholesterol and triglyceride levels. That stimulates the thyroid, the adrenals, and the endocrine system. That is being used by a number of ophthalmologists to help revitalize vision. The only exercise I believe that can claim to be an isometric for, for toning, an isotonic for building, a calisthenic for targeting, an aerobic for conditioning, and a flexibility program without ever having to stretch. A program that can be done literally in 10 minutes a day in the convenience of your own home, at the office, or while you travel, and you don't have to change your clothes, and you don't need to break out into a sweat in order to enjoy its benefits. Ladies and gentlemen, that's solar size. I'm out of time. Thank you very much. I suggest. <laughs> if your body, if your body could communicate with you in a language we understood, I suggest you'd wake up in the morning, walk in the bathroom, and on your forehead it would read, "Please shake well before using." <laughs> I know there's some questions. Um, hey everyone, we're going to take a two-minute bathroom break. If anybody needs to go, and you can ask David a question in between. And then we'll perfect. Perfect.